How many come to glorify the Lamb? How many come to lift up the mighty name of Jesus tonight? How many knows he's still on the throne tonight, folks? He's still in the healing business? Come on, I need some help out there tonight. Amen. Amen. We come to worship. We come to praise tonight. We come to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. And I just want to welcome you here tonight. My goodness, we've got Nathan Sheridan in the house tonight. Going to lead us in the praise. Lead us in the worship and do the throne room of heaven tonight. How many wants to go behind the veil tonight? Go into the holies of holies. Amen. God has prepared a way tonight. We've been blood bought. We're washed in the blood of the Lamb tonight. Glory. Give me the shout preaching at me already. Amen. I am excited about tonight. I'm excited that you're here tonight. You could have been a lot of places, but you made an effort, you made a choice, you made a decision to be here tonight, and we serve the God who still honors faith. He honors obedience tonight, and I, I promise you, you're going to leave here differently than the way you come in. We serve a mighty God who loves you dearly tonight, who cares about you. And so, uh, anyway, I just want to share a little bit about Nathan to read a scripture and have a word of prayer. We're going to get started tonight. How many just want to just have a fresh encounter with God? Whoop, man, I feel the Holy Ghost here, folks. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. Nathan Sheridan was 15 years old when he simultaneously discovered his connection both to God and to music. Despite his lack of formal training, Nathan's musical affinity has opened many doors for him. And after being given his first guitar at the age of 15 by his sister, and by the age of 17, Nathan already had aspirations to seriously pursue his artistic endeavors as a singer and a songwriter. Born to drug-addicted parents, Nathan was raised by his grandparents in the small town of Pearl River, Louisiana. At the age of 17, Nathan signed up for a six-year contract with the U.S. Army National Guard and was soon deployed to Kuwait to participate in Operation Enduring Freedom. Nathan soon began leading worship at the chapel on base for hundreds of soldiers every week. It was there that Nathan really honed his musical abilities and discovered exactly what God had in store for him. Woo, my, my, my. He dedicated himself to using his gift to lead others and to spread the message that God has a plan for every life, regardless of their past, just as he has for Nathan. Amen. My goodness, this Holy Ghost good. Psalms, Psalms 145 says, I will extol thee, my God. O King, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day I will bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and it is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcast of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and he bindeth up their wounds. Come on, somebody. That's my God. God tonight, amen. Woo, I don't care what you're going through tonight, folks. Your answer is here tonight, amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And let's, just invite, let's invite this God in tonight, amen. Father, we just come to praise you, my Lord. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, as you're opening the windows of heaven. Lord, you're opening the curtains tonight, God. Lord, you're allowing, Lord, the presence of Almighty God, Lord, to come down. Lord, as heaven is stooping over right now, as heaven is bowed down, Lord, to come down to earth tonight, God, to meet man. Father, we present ourselves, Lord, as broken. Lord, we present ourselves as humble tonight, Lord, as meek. Father, we come to have a fresh encounter tonight, Lord, as you gathered up Israel. Lord, as you brought up the brokenhearted tonight, Lord, I pray that you'll begin to meet every heart tonight, Lord, to begin to heal the hurting tonight, Lord. I pray if somebody's sick tonight, Lord, they will be healed before they leave here. Father, I pray over every family problem tonight, Lord, that they'd be restored, that be renewed tonight. Father, I pray the Spirit of God will begin to move in a mighty way tonight. God, as our hearts are prepared, Lord, as our hearts are prepared, Lord, to meet with you tonight, Lord, we come to the altar tonight. We come to the altar of God tonight. Father, believing for the fresh fire, Lord, the fresh oil, Lord, the fresh anointing tonight of your mighty presence. 
Father, we pray for unity. We pray for harmony tonight. Father, we love you, Lord. We give you all the praise. Lord, we, we come together tonight in Jesus' name. Come on tonight. Sure, let's give a good round of applause tonight for my good friend, my brother in the Lord tonight, Brother Nathan Sheridan. What's going on, Oklahoma? Let's get on our feet and worship. Something God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. Cause he opened the prison doors and he parted the raging seas. My God, he holds the victory. Come on, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is truly in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. We worship the God who heals. We worship the God who saves. We worship the God who always makes a way Cause he hung up on that cross Then he walked out from that grave My God still rolling so The house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. Forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on. Shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. It's uncomfortable to look at yourself that in the mirror Unusual to search within ourselves for the reasons why we can't get along Oh, but we did, we go so wrong this time 
your back on your feet you know when jesus said it well then you know it must be true to love them as i loved you my child so just come on over calling on my shoulder How you guys doing tonight? You guys uh, came expecting, I hope. This is a, a new song of mine, actually, that I just released called Never Gonna Walk Away. I wrote this song uh, about a year and a half ago, actually, and I kind of needed it during COVID season because uh, I needed to be reminded that, you know, we serve a God that never leaves us. He never walks away from us. Amen. He's always with us in the midst of our pain and our trials and our tribulations. Amen. But this one is uh, out everywhere right now. Um, on Spotify, iTunes, and everything. So really, really happy with, you know, how it's been received. So this one's called Never Gonna Walk Away. Sunshine breaking through the dark Revealing every broken part of me I keep turning my eyes I wanna run and hide Afraid of what you might see When I stumble You're always there to pick me up And set me on the promise that you made You're never gonna walk away No, you're never gonna walk away Turn it all, turn it all around When I stumble, always there to pick me up 
and set me on the promise that you made. You're never gonna walk away. No, you're never gonna walk away. I can trust you with my heart, 'cause you knew me from the start. I believe you when you say you're never gonna walk. Away. You're never gonna walk away. No, you're never gonna walk away. I can trust you with my heart, 'cause you held it from the start. I believe in you when you said you're never gonna walk away. No, you're never gonna walk. Away. I can trust you in my heart, 'cause you held it from the start. No, you're never gonna walk away. And I know that you never leave me. I know that you'll always be there. No, you're never gonna walk away.
cries out the sound of your praise. I'm amazed by It's good to be here. I uh, drove 10 hours to get here, believe it or not. Lived all, I live all the way in Etheridge, Tennessee. And uh, if you don't know where that is, which is very likely that you don't know where that is, it is a small Amish community. And I should say, when I say small, I mean we're the small part because the rest of it's Amish. And, um, you know, we moved out there. I want to say about two years ago, man, uh, or has it been a year? No, it's been a, it's been a little over a year actually. And this was all during COVID. It was all during COVID. We had, we I, we had just had the baby. She was uh, born very very ill. And my daughter Finley, she was born ill and she couldn't breathe and and things like that. Things wrong with her kidneys. Things wrong with her liver. And we were in the NICU for two weeks, man. And I don't know if anybody was in the hospital when COVID was happening or uh, had to visit someone in the hospital, but it was basically impossible to, uh, to go. Either you couldn't get in or once you were in, you couldn't get out. <laughs> so I wasn't allowed to leave. We were there for a little over a week. And uh, as soon as I got out, I had to move <laughs> my whole family out of our, the house we were renting and into <laughs> the house we were buying. So as soon as I got out, we just had our baby girl. <laughs> we just had our baby girl. And I had to leave my family there and get all our stuff out the house and rush back in before the lease. It was just craziness. And I just remember feeling in that time, man, just a sense of overwhelming, just of overwhelming stress and frustration, man. And I felt, I felt like, you know, I was about to break and I was under so much stress that maybe I just couldn't go on. But this song really spoke to me in that time. You know, he, God leaves the 99 for the one, amen. He leaves the 99 for the one. And I was the one. I was definitely the one in that situation. So I think you guys are going to recognize this one.
Is it okay if I testify tonight? I uh, <clears throat> make it a point everywhere I go to share my testimony because, you know, anybody can get up here and sing songs about Jesus, but it's another thing to talk about what Jesus has actually done in your life. You know, me and uh, me and Pastor were having a conversation earlier, and he was talking about authenticity, and I think it's so important to uh, be able to relate to people and. And let them know that whatever they went through, you went through something kind of like that too. Or something similar, something, maybe it was, you know, something really, really painful. You know, for me, I was born to drug addicted parents. I mean, right off the bat, right off the bat, I was, I was in a bad situation. I was uh, living in a trailer park, a dilapidated trailer park in Pensacola, Florida, believe it or not. And, uh. It was just me, my sister, my mom, and my dad. And my mom got so, so bad on drugs that one day, I mean, I'm not joking, and one day she sold everything in her home. And I mean, down to the bed, to the clothes we wore, the refrigerator, the oven, I mean, everything. And I know that's hard to believe. She sold my dad's guitar for 50 bucks that was worth thousands of dollars, things like that. And I'm not sure where I was before, but you know, I walked in to the house and I saw that everything was gone. It was me and my sister both. And then my dad showed up. And man, when my dad got in the house and saw that everything was gone, you know, him and my mother got into a huge fist fight. And it was that night that my mom, you know, kicked him out, called the police, and she called my grandparents in Pearl River, Louisiana, and said, hey, come get these kids right now because I can't raise them anymore. And, you know, after that night, my grandparents came and they picked me up. It was just me and my sister sitting on a blanket in the trailer we were in. No parents around. I, don't know where, I didn't know where my dad was, didn't know where my mom was. And they scooped us up and took us home that night, and I didn't see my mother again for over 10 years. And then shortly after that, shortly after moving in, shortly after moving in with my grandparents, I was probably around five or six around this time. 
My sister fell very, 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 very ill with uh, brain cancer. And she was only eight. And, you know, it was one of those things. It was a very, very rare form of cancer. And we were in and out of hospitals. and Went through that for about a year. And, you know, ultimately she ended up passing away. And I remember that being just something so, so painful for me. Even at a young age, you know, I remember staring in the mirror. I was at my sister's house, my, uh, my much older sister from a, different, uh, from a different mother. And she used to watch us. And she watched me a lot when Sarah was sick. And then one day she, she told me, hey, Nathan, we need to, I need to take you back to your grandparents' house. And I remember just had gotten there. I had just gotten there. So I was, I was really, you know, wondering why she wanted to take me back. You know, I said, man, I just got here. You know, why, I don't want to go home yet. And she says, no, we really, really need to go home. And when I showed up, we were waking my sister that day, and I had no idea. I put on a suit and a tie. And I remember looking in the mirror and I remember just crying and asking things that only a child could ask, you know, so innocent. But I remember asking, but who am I going to play with? And, you know, that kind of started, that planted the seed of, of hatred in my heart for my parents. Because you see, my mom never showed up to the funeral. She, uh, she didn't show up. My dad showed up, though, but he was in an orange jumpsuit, <laughs> shackles around his wrist, shackles around his feet. And they let him right in. They let him right back out. I didn't even get to see him. So, man, after that, I just, <laughs> I just skated through life. You know, an only child adapting to my new environment without without a sibling, without parents. And, you know, thank God. Thank God for praying grandparents, amen. Because they took me to a church that wasn't much bigger than this one right here in a small town, believe it or not. In a small town, and I received Christ at 14 years old, amen. Amen. But you know, even when I made that radical transformation and accepted Jesus into my heart, even when I had that, I remember calling my grandpa, I was so excited, I said, I got saved last night. <laughs> even then, I could not get rid of this unforgiveness that I had in my heart. And I don't know if uh, anybody out here can testify to this, but when you become a Christian, it doesn't mean all the problems go away. It doesn't mean the unforgiveness that you have in your heart necessarily goes away. You have to deal with those things, amen? And I'm not saying Jesus can't take, that thing, take those things away. But a lot of times it's a process, amen? A lot of times it's a process. And, you know, at 14 I got saved and I, I still had this, you know, kind of unforgiveness in my heart, this hatred for my parents. Uh, you know, my mom only came back around, she, around, you know, 15, 16, she came back around and tried to meet back up with me, but got back on the drugs, got back, you know, on the alcohol, went back to prison. And I mean, it was just the same cycle over and over and over and over and over. And then I've, I had officially had enough. I just made the decision to say, I hate my parents. I hate my dad, I hate my mom, I don't want anything to do with them. Could care less if they die. I would say terrible things like that. Really, I would. As a Christian, you know, and that was a sin, and I recognize that now, amen. You know, because you can't go around with unforgiveness in your heart. <laughs> and then I ended up <laughs> joining the military. Funny story, when your friend asks you to join the military with him, make sure he actually joins. Because guess who went and guess who didn't? 
but I ended up joining the military and getting deployed and just doing all these just wild things that I just never dreamt I would do. Getting to lead worship for hundreds and hundreds of soldiers. It was amazing. I mean, we really saw, we saw hundreds of soldiers in Kuwait come to Christ. You know, revival can even happen overseas, amen? It doesn't just happen uh, here in America. In fact, I think we need it more here in America than overseas. <laughs> But even then, man, even after being fostered in that environment, even in, after being in that environment for so long, I couldn't deal with what was inside, man. And then one day I was talking to a friend and he told me, I told him my story and he said, Nathan, you know, you need to tell people what you're telling me right now and you need to write a song about it. So I did, man. When I went to go cut my first record, I uh, needed to write songs and I went upstairs and I wrote this next one at, two in the morning and I believe it took me 15 15 or 20 minutes to write and when I wrote it man I just felt the blood of Jesus just rushing over me in that moment and he was just calling me saying Nathan you can let this go you can be healed of all this and you know I can stand here a free man today even after all I went through even after my sister passing away even after my, my parents abandoning me even after them being on drugs and in and out of prison, I can stand here a free man today and say, I don't hate them because just like there's redemption for me, there's redemption for them. Amen. And you know, there's redemption for every single person in this room right now. And I have no idea what you're going through. No idea. Maybe you're that kid sitting in the audience and your parents aren't around. I know exactly what that's like. Maybe you're that grandparent who's raising your grandkid. I know what that's like too. Maybe it's something totally different. Maybe you're doing terrible in school. Maybe you're about to lose your job. Maybe you just lost your job. Maybe you're backsliding. Maybe it's some type of addiction. There's no telling. You know, you don't judge the person to your left and your right, amen. You never know what somebody's going through. You know, if you're driving down the highway and somebody flips you off in traffic, just say, praise God. Because <laughs> that person, you know they're going through something, amen. There's so many people that are going through something. And it could be the person that you see in church every Sunday. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus won't just redeem you. He'll redeem your circumstances, amen. And he's taking everything in your life, every single thing, and turning it around for the good. I believe that's going to happen tonight. Somebody's going to get set free tonight, amen. You know, sometimes we delay our own healing. We delay our own healing. And I know I delayed mine for a long time. And I'm thankful I wrote this next song because it helped me get through it. This one's called Broken With You. I'm not 
not sure I'm ready to trust anyone Cause what if I just got hurt again I think I should cry it all out But I'm afraid to let my feelings show Oh, swing love, sweet savior, my heart is on the floor, broken into, but at least I'm broken with you. And I wouldn't be surprised if it gave up on me. Sometimes I think you probably should But he is patiently waiting And he's never left He's still guiding everyone And breathing every breath So maybe it's time for the healing And maybe it's time to let the past go Oh, swing low, sweet Savior My heart is on the floor Broken into But in this time, broken On the floor, broken into least and broken with you. Give me a praise. I uh, recently went to the Dominican Republic and got to visit with some children that were a lot like me and uh, beautiful, beautiful kids with hopes and dreams. And if you guys don't mind, I actually, I could ramble on forever about this, but I actually want to show you this video because it's really, really close to me. It hits, it hits home for me and I'll tell you why in a few, but uh, just watch this video real quick. I'm Mark Plummer, president of One Child Matters. I'm standing here in a studio in Nashville, Tennessee. In just a couple of minutes, I'll be interviewing Marcus Rickson, a sponsored child from Calcutta, India. He was part of the program from about four years to 18 years of age. Today, he is a Christian artist manager in Nashville. What he does not know is that downstairs during this interview, we will have his sponsors, and they'll be watching by video monitor. And by the end of the interview, Marcus will get to meet his sponsors. I grew up in the heart of Calcutta uh, with my mom, dad, and my sister in a, in a tiny little 12 by 6 feet uh, home. At some point, you had the opportunity to go to school. How did that all take place? My parents approached the school and said, hey, we have a son that we cannot afford to give a proper education. Is there any way you can help us? I was able to get a sponsor and that's how I landed up even going to the school. How did your parents feel about that when that happened? That's probably one of the biggest blessings they've ever had because they couldn't provide for me a life that they wanted to, but here someone interjected and came in and partnered with them. At some point, you had a dream to be involved in music. Tell me about how that came about and what your thoughts were. For some reason, music's always been on my heart. At home, we didn't have a television. We have a little radio, so I would come home, mom would be playing some kind of whatever the radio played, and that just was so cool to me. It was around the eighth grade, and I remember being like, 
I want to be a part of the music industry. I don't know how. I want to figure a way where I'm able to be a part of the industry and shape the future of music. Explain to me how it was you came through high school with this dream and then you end up becoming a Christian artist manager. I was able to apply to a college in Kentucky, got scholarship, and then I was able to pay my way through college by working. Next thing you knew, I hitchhiked with a couple of my friends to Nashville. I, I uh, volunteered my time to help artists with road and sound and concert. And next thing you knew, people wanted to hire me to be a part of their team. And now I've entered into a season where I manage artists' careers. With us in the room today is your wife, Abby. And she's about two weeks away from having your first child, a boy by the name of Elliot. You ever thought about how different his life is going to be than yours? Every morning I wake up and I pray, I'm like, how blessed I am right now and how blessed me and my wife have been to have the opportunity to provide that life for Elliot when he comes into the world. I am where I am because people have loved on me and have loved on my family where I'm now able to not only take care of my wife and my child, but be a resource to my mom, my dad, my sister, and my friends, where I'm able to stretch my arm out and pull them with me. I want to go help the next kid. I want to pass on the baton. If you could give a word of encouragement as if you're reaching out to your sponsor, what would you say in terms of value of sponsorship? I felt like I had a friend in a different part of the world that actually cared for me and my family. And now where I am, I, I could see how important it is they're not just changing the child's life, they're changing the life of the whole family and the generations to come after that. It's not sponsoring a kid, it's sponsoring a generation. Me now knowing that someone believed in me and believed in my dream, that person is a blessing from God for me. But them doing that is what Jesus would do. The only reason I sit here and talk to you is because I'm the product of love. Someone took that step of faith and said, I'm going to sponsor a kid today. By doing that, it changed my life. It changed my heart towards sponsorship to where I want to now, in turn, sponsor kids. And I have the opportunity to do that. Marcus, um your sponsors are downstairs and they've been watching this interview. Would you like to meet them? They'll yes. Be, they'll be coming up the stairs in just a moment here. Marcus, I'd like you to meet David and Regina Wilkes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Thank you so much, Polly. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You guys have been, been a, my family. You, you've been part of my family. We love you. And the reason I show you that video is because, you know, Marcus isn't just any manager, he's my manager. And uh, yeah, you can definitely clap for that. So whenever tell me, people tell me that stuff like this, you know, doesn't work, I, I just, I can just show them this video and Marcus has made a huge difference in my life. Hey baby. 
That's my daughter back there, and she's also made a huge difference in my life. And you know, there's kids just like her. There's kids just like her that need a sponsor. And you know, this is just me. This is just me asking you to pray about it. My wife has, my wife or somebody in the back, they have packets that have the faces of children on them that need a sponsor and they need them desperately. And it's for, I mean, it's for food, water. I mean, it's for medical supplies. I mean, I just got back from the Dominican Republic and it was, to be honest, it was an awful thing to witness, to see people squandering and what they were squandering in. But you know, these kids have real hopes, real dreams, amen? Real hopes and real dreams. But my wife has packets in the back. If you want more information on it, just raise your hand. She'll bring you a packet. But please, 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 if you don't sponsor the child, please return it to the table. That way we can give it to somebody else and give that child another opportunity to be sponsored. But I thank you guys for listening to that. It's super, super important to me uh, because of my manager and because he's made such a huge difference in my life. And we never know who we're affecting. Amen. We never know who we're affecting or, or where life will take us or where God will take us. You have pain you can't forget. Life won't treat you better if you were someone else. Every path that you've taken takes you the long way around. Have wandered, you've been lost, you were found, and you don't have to be perfect to be loved perfectly when you don't feel worth it. You're worth everything from your head down to your feet. You're the image of a king, he can reach you right where you're at. Yeah, he If you feel invisible, he knows where you are. Past the point of loving yourself, you're ready to give up. But he is able, he is waiting for you to take his hand. When you can't go on, know that he cares. And you don't have to be hurt. and defeated cause he loves like that yes are you searching for Jesus cause you don't have to be perfect to be loved perfectly when you don't feel worth it you're worth everything from your head down to your feet you're the image of a king he can True, right where you're at. Yeah, he loves you. Don't have to be perfect to be loved perfectly when you don't feel worthy. You're worth everything from your head down to your feet. You're the image of a king. He can meet you right where you're at. And right now, <clears throat> really what I want to do is uh, I just want to open the altar right now. 
I just want to open up the altar. I just, I just know there's somebody in here going through it right now. And maybe you need prayer. I'm not sure. And I don't know if there's anybody in here that's on the prayer team or connected to that in some way or just feels led like they can come up here and pray with people. But if you need prayer tonight, please come. Just come. You know, God can take away every single thing you're dealing with. Every single thing you're dealing with. There's a purpose for you in this life. <laughs> There's a purpose for you in this life. And I wrote this song about exactly that. God, take away all our fears. Take away all the things that, that hold us down. Take away our addictions. Take away, take away anything that isn't of you. But even, even better, take away all the things that I treasure. Take away all the things if it's my money keeping from you, God, take it away. If it's my job keeping me from you, God, take it away. And maybe there's something in your life tonight that you need, you need the Lord to take away from you. Southern towns of heads, a prison tattoo, making old folks nervous. Yes, I have been covered by what the world may deem. So I'll give you this crown It shows anyhow Do with it what you will And take it away Everything I held dear Take it Everything 
This is a song I wrote, uh, it's kind of the opposite side of my testimony, I guess, where, uh, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for, amen? We have a lot to be thankful for. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not all bad, amen? You know, I can, I can look at my life now and say, you know, all the, everything that I told you earlier, yeah, but I have a beautiful wife, I have a beautiful kid, I have good friends, and I have Jesus, Amen? And this song is about exactly that, all the things I'm thankful for, my grandparents and my, uh, my daughter, my wife, my friends. And this song actually ended up going, uh, believe it or not, crossing over onto country music. <laughs> and went on country music television for a little while and, and went up to number eight on the charts. So, you know, uh, it's always nice when something, a, a Christian song can cross over, amen, and, and show a light to the world, amen. So this is a song that's really, really near and dear to my heart. This one's called Again. Yeah, here's to my grandma who's loved me through it all. Raising me was a challenge in itself. Oh, and go get out of bed. It's time for church. What's in your head? You could give this day to the Lord. And here's to my grandpa. Hands are worn, heart was strong. He worked hard to provide for all of us. Promise me you'll find a way to stay off of your feet all day. Burning up in this hot summer sun And oh, how the time flies Where does it all go? Oh, every moment she's passing by Faster God, stop this world from spinning. Rewinding back to the beginning and live this life we've been living again. And here's to my lover, sometimes I wonder why she said yes three short years ago. Marriage isn't easy, but I'm understood completely. I'd do anything to make her stay. You know, sometimes you need a little grace. And oh, how the time flies, where does it all go? Oh, every moment she's passing by faster than we know. Oh, God, stop this world from spinning, rewinding back to the beginning.
And here's to my sister God, how I miss her You know, sometimes it feels like yesterday That we were playing in the yard And counting all the passing cars But that's been almost 18 years ago Yeah, God had his reasons, I suppose And oh, how the time flies, where does it all go? Oh, every moment she's passing by faster than we know. No God stop this world from spinning. Rewind it back to the I'm actually going to invite the pastor up uh, right now. Um, if he's around, see what I say? Come on up. Amen. Aren't you glad that God does it again and again and again? God never fails us. Wow. Thank you, Nathan. I Come here, big guy. You know, I, I love this guy because he really likes my cooking. <laughs> There's a lot of food. Hey, ma'am. I especially got to feed his daughter, little Finley. She likes my green beans. <laughs> I stand pretty proud tonight. Um, but, um, anyway, uh, you know, this, uh, I mean, what did we meet, about 18 months ago, there about 15 or so. And uh, I fell in love with this guy. And if I had to describe one word, describe me, it would be this right here, genuine, genuine. This guy is humble, and he hadn't changed since I met him. He come back today, and uh, he's still got the same passion for Christ, still loves people, and he's still, he's a music evangelist, and he's sharing the gospel. He's leaving here tonight when this is over and driving 10, 12 hours to Colorado to another, another concert tomorrow night. Here's the good news. You get to help him get there. You get to help him get there. You get to help put gas in his tank, and food in his tummy, food in his belly, and you help to get him to that next concert tomorrow night. So with that being said, the Bible says that the laborer is worthy of his hire. So we're going to take up a love offer. Now, this guy come free gratis. But we're going to take up a love offering for him tonight because I've enjoyed it. I don't know about you, but I have been blessed tonight. I have been ministered to. God has helped me tonight, begin to heal me. We, I read the scripture tonight, God heals the brokenhearted. And if you come in tonight, God has healed you. We've sowed seed or he's sowed seed into your life tonight. And I believe that God is able and going to return that. And the scripture says this, when you cast your bread upon the waters... Not many days hence, they shall return to you. Amen. You may not see the rewards in this life, but I guarantee when you get to heaven, you're going to see the rewards and reap the rewards of you giving here tonight. So anyway, I, but Sister Amanda, I, I know this is off key. We talked a little bit about this. Could we do a congregational Amazing Grace? Yeah. I knew you'd agree with it. <laughs> is it a shame that I have to look up all the lyrics? No. <laughs> Josh, you can whoop them up, can't you? We got it. We, hey, we got it, Nathan. Oh, good. Sister Amanda, we got one of the best praise team worship leaders around here. Come on, Sister Amanda. Help me come up here tonight and, uh, and uh, come on down. Amen. You, you know me. I, I like to stir the pot. I like to stir the pot and poke the bear, then walk off. 
<laughs> but anyway, I just appreciate Sister Man and Brother Dustin tonight. And uh, so, but anyway, we're going to pray over this offering tonight. Then we're going to usher, but hey, we're going to do a congregational amazing grace. Then I'm sure Nathan's going to come back and do one more, uh, do one more song for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. So anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for you are awesome. Lord, you're awesome in this place tonight. Father, we thank you for what we have. Lord, while you've ministered to us, Lord, through the songs. Now, Lord, under the orchestration, Lord, of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you tonight for the love that's in this place. Lord, we thank you for the breakthroughs. We thank you for the deliverances. We thank you for the healings tonight. Father, we thank you for the camaraderie. Lord, we know that, uh, Lord, the common ground is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Father, we thank you for the blood tonight. We thank you for the gospel. Lord, the good news. We thank you for the cross of Calvary. Lord, because we're still proclaiming the good news. Father, we, whoo, my, my, my. Father, we thank you for the love tonight. Lord, and I just pray that you would bless this offering tonight. Lord, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Lord, may your kingdom continue to grow and prosper. Father, we thank you tonight for faithful givers. Lord, we love you and we give you the praise for it in Jesus' holy name. And the whole church said amen. Amen, amen. amen. I want to sow some seed tonight. Amen. Sing it for us. I'll stand. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now.
so 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 much it's been an honor and a pleasure i'll be in the back guys would love to meet you god bless you